Hey YouTube, this is Tech Savvy Solution here. I'm here with another video review, and this time I'm reviewing my top 10 App Store applications for the iPhone and or iPod Touch. So all these applications are free. All you have to do is go to the App Store and download them. No other hassles. So let's get started. Alright, so the first application on the list is the alarm clock. And probably like half of the reason why I put this on the list is just because of the Y 2011 bug. Not Y2K, but Y 2011, where the alarm clock for the iPhone stopped working or didn't go off when it's supposed to. So it's good to have an alarm clock that will go off if you have to wake up in the morning. So the good thing about this app is one, it's free, but two, there are only ads in the portrait mode and not the landscape mode. And people usually use the landscape mode more often. So it's good that they were nice enough not to put ads here. So if you go to options, you can add an alarm, and then you could even name your alarm. And let's just say you want to wake up and go to the gym. And you have your own note when you wake up, and that's good so you remember what you have to do. And then you also have some advanced options. And pretty much, that's kind of self-explanatory. You have vibrant or vibrate on or off if you want the alarm on. And you can save these settings as default so you don't have to keep on going and adjusting the settings every time you open up the app. So for the regular settings, you also have the option to show the weather when you when the alarm wakes up. And then for miscellaneous options, you have auto lock, one in battery power, or one plugged in a charger, just in case you don't want it to lock since your phone's not going to drain since it's plugged in. Alright, so let's tap on this music icon right here. And pretty much, if you have the pro version, then you'll be able to like set your own songs as like the ringtones and change the colors but for now I think the light version will do and that's why it's on my top 10. So next on the list is the Pulse Newsreader and I pretty much like this app because of the visual interface. It's really easy to look at the headlines and get a good idea of what it's trying to say without ha actually having to go and click on it. It kind of reminds me of the Windows 7 mobile interface where you have these tiles and then you can like slide these tiles around to look at the news and it's pretty nifty and it's fairly smooth. So if you want to add another source, you can click the add button. And there are a lot of sources and a lot of tiles that you can add. So let's just say you want Android, Cent Android Central onto there. It's added and then you can say done. Android Center Central is on the bottom and you can like shift whether whatever order you want the feeds to display in then you can refresh and it refreshes fairly quickly so when it's done you can just move on and then you'll see Android Central is right here and then info will show you all about Pulse I guess we don't have to go to that right now so that's the Pulse Newsfeed application. And the next application on the list is Mood Agent. And this is a music app for people that don't want to sift through the whole entire music library just to listen to a song that fits their mood at the time. So you can just play around with the toggles. Let's say you want a song that you're really angry. It's not sunny outside. You want it to be fast. Press play, and the first song on the list is this. And then you can always scroll through the songs that fit the mood that you're in. And I have to say, the mood agent is pretty accurate when it comes to attaching your mood to a certain song. So you're not going to get some outlandish song that doesn't fit the mood at all. They're pretty good at making it fit 
whatever you set for the mood toggles. And if you don't want to bother with the mood toggles, you can always click on the magnifying glass and just go to your song library and play songs from there. So that's Mood Agent. My, f um, I think my favorite, well that's why it's on this list, way to combine both Twitter and Facebook into one app is the application TweetDeck. And it uses palm pre-like cards to organize your information and organize your news feeds. And what something's, or what is pretty clever about this app is that you can add a column, that's what they call it, and let's say you're looking forward to the iPhone jailbreak for the new firmware. You could say, you can add a new group or add a new column. Just name it iPhone jailbreak. Say done. And then you can select the users. And if you know the jailbreak community, you know that Comex, Geohot, and yeah. Mike Cohen are on the jailbroken jailbreak scene. And you might also want to follow iPod Touch fans. And you say done. And then you add a column. And what that column will do will display those Twitters or those um, tweeters all in one card so that you can just like see what they posted and don't you don't have to like sift through all the other people that you're following on Twitter. And you have it all in one place, so you can stock them for the jailbreak. Yay. And then of course, you can post your own status, whether it be on Twitter or on Facebook. You have options of tagging people, or for shortening links, taking a picture, or adding your location. And then you have your settings, where you can sign into your TweetDeck account, or add Facebook to this application. All in all, it's really smooth. I like the graphics and it does a good job of organizing Facebook and Twitter into one application. Next on the list is Flashlight. It's more of a practical application or maybe for fun. If you're not a jailbroken user and you just want a flashlight, it uses the LED light of the iPhone. Yeah, pretty self-explanatory, simple, easy to use, and the ads aren't too bad. Next application on the list is Adobe Photoshop Express. These are for the people who like to edit their pictures on the go and you don't want to connect to a computer just to edit your pictures. So let's just take a photo and say I want to take a photo of my cat bobblehead all right so I'm gonna take a picture focus and take a shot all right so then we can say you use this picture and then we can either crop it or straighten it so let's say we want to crop it can move this around say okay you have other options such as like the exposure or saturation and you can slide left and right in order to adjust the amount say okay you also have tint contrast black and white you also have some other effects like sketch and then you also have these type of photo effects, like a rainbow. And then you can say OK. And then of course some borders if you're feeling creative. If you look at this, and then you can say OK. And then when you're done, you can either save it and be done with it, or you have the option to save and upload it to Facebook or Twitter, any social network, I guess, of your choice. And I'm just going to save and exit. And that is Adobe Photoshop for iPhone. 
On to the next application, we have SpringPad. Just an easy way to store your notes and stuff. So let's create a new note. Or we can add a new task. And it has it's just a very clean and organized way to just like have all your information and all your to-do lists and all your notes in one place. So if we say hello as your task, you have a due date due in a month. You can categorize it or you can add a description. And then you can also attach a photo or a note to that task. So if we take a photo, take a photo of my bobblehead again. All right. And then you can use that. And then you could write it and then put it as a notebook and be done with that. And you can also change the theme of this. You have a lot of settings for spring pad. So let's say you wanted maybe like a gray theme. And voila, the background is personalized for you. On to the next application, we have Dragon Dictation. I like this app because it's a fairly accurate voice to text app in case you don't want to be like typing with your thumbs. You can just tap and dictate. So let's try it. I like ice cream. Please take me to the mall and buy me an ice cream cone. Thank you. And you can see that it's fairly accurate except for the word buying, but hey, it's pretty good. And you also have options to send it to Facebook, Twitter, emailing it, or copying it. And you also have settings for that too. And you can always edit it with the iPhone keyboard. And that's Dragon Dictation. Next application that I find to be pretty cool, or pretty useful at least, is this dictionary. There are probably many dictionaries out there in the App Store, most of which are like paid dictionaries or big time dictionaries like Webster and Oxford. But this is a simple dictionary that still has a good amount of words that you might find to be like odd that, whoa, I didn't know this dictionary like has this word in it, but it does, and it has a, since it has such a fairly good large vocabulary and it's free I put this on my top 10 list to have for applications for the app store so check that out and the last application on the list is fake a call it's more like either a prank app to impress your friends if you're an iPod touch user and don't have an iPhone to make calls or if you're in a sticky situation and you just want to like get out of it if you're in a bad dinner or something with a friend that you just kind of want to go home then you can use this app to say hey I have a call from my boss or something so you can set your ringtones from standard tones available or ones from your library you can set it up and rename your caller and say oh he's calling from his like mobile phone or something and then yeah you can pretty much set who you want to be calling you. Let's just say we want our boss calling and we want him to call now. You can answer it. Put on speaker. Hello, this is Mr. Williams calling from the office. Did you complete your IUW report? And there you go. It's just a fairly fun app to have and that's why I put out my top 10 list of applications to have from the App Store. So that concludes the review. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please rate, comment, and subscribe. By the way I am selling this phone on eBay so if you like it please check out the eBay link in the video description. 
Otherwise, I'll see you guys later in the next video review or tutorial.